Hey guys, we're going to talk about imaginary numbers, what they are, and how to solve them. So on the most basic level, if I have the square root of 16, that means what two numbers multiplied together that are twins get me to 16. And you could say 4 times 4. But you could also say negative 4 times negative 4, because two negatives would make a positive 16. Okay? If I were to give you a negative 16, you might be tempted to say, well, negative 4 times negative 4 equals negative 16. That's not true. It would give me back to that positive 16. So I would have to have one positive 4 and one negative 4 to get to negative 16. Well, these are no longer twins. You having $4 in your pocket and you owing me $4 are two very different things. So what this means is that there is no number that can be negative and square rooted. So what we would do is we would say, negative 1 times positive 16 gets me back to this negative 16. That means I could do negative 1 times positive 16 and then I could say negative 1 times 4 plus or minus. This negative 1 square root cannot exist in our math world. So we say it's an imaginary or I, okay? And a common system that we have is that we take this negative 16 and we split it. So now we say it is plus or minus 4 plus i. This together with a number and i is known as a complex system. Okay. So how do we add and subtract them? So let's say I had 7 plus... 2i plus 1 minus 4i. We would treat this just like any other variable. We add our constants, so we get 8 minus 2i. You got 7 plus 1 is 8, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So if I were given 3 plus 2i minus 5 minus 7i, I would rewrite this as 3 plus 2i, distribute the negative, and I have negative 5, two negatives make a positive, 7i, then I would add my constants, so 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and 2i plus 7 is 9i. So when it comes to our multiplication and division, our i chart is going to be super, super useful. So i by itself, we discussed earlier, is the same as the square root of negative 1. i squared is going to be negative 1 times negative 1. Well, this would be the same as negative 1 squared. And a square root and a square cancel each other out. I'm left with negative 1. i to the third power would mean i to the second power times i, which would be the same as negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, or negative root negative 1. And then i to the fourth power would be the same as i squared times i squared, because 2 plus 2 is 4, or negative 1 times negative 1, or positive 1. And if we do this over and over and over again, we'll see that our pattern just starts repeating. So any combination of 4 will get us the same type of answers. Okay, so how do we solve these types of problems? So let's say I have negative 81 minus negative 144. Okay, so this would become negative 1 times 81 minus negative 1 times 144, which would turn into negative 1 times root 81 
minus negative 1 times root 144. The root of 81 is plus or minus 9 minus Okay, so then we are going to say that this is the same as plus or minus 9i minus plus or minus 12i, okay? And we're going to just assume positive for the sake of combining them. So then it would be 9i minus 12i because positive and negative make a negative, and then 9i minus 12 is negative 3i, okay? All right. Another example could be x squared plus 19 over 2 minus x. Evaluate x as if it was 3i. So what I'm going to do is do 3i squared plus 19 all over 2 minus 3i, okay? 3 squared is 9, and then i squared, going back to our chart, is negative 1 plus 19 all over 3, 2 minus 3i. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9 plus 19 all over 2 minus 3i. I would add these together and I get 10 over 2 minus 3i. The only issue with stopping here is we do not like i to be on the bottom of the fraction. So what we do is we multiply what's known as the conjugate. The conjugate is the bottom part but positive. So then I can multiply this out, so then I get 20 plus 60i on the top, and then on the bottom I would get 4 minus 9i squared. That's 2 times 4, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9, and i times i is i squared. And then i squared turns into negative 1. These two would turn into a positive 9, and then I add those together to get 20 plus 60i all over 13. I could be super fancy and then split these and then simplify each fraction, but this answer is just fine, okay? Last one is, let's say I have 8 over 1 plus 2i. So now I have a fraction within a fraction. I do not like i on the bottom. So I need to multiply by its conjugate, which just means i over i for this example because there's no plus or minus. Then I multiply out, so then I get 8 over 1 plus 2i over i squared. i squared is just negative 1, so then I have 8 over 1 plus 2i over negative 1. Positive 2 and negative 1 turns into just negative 2i. Again, I don't like i on the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by its conjugate which is positive 2. When I do that, I get 8 plus 16i, and then here I get 1, negative 4, i squared. And then i squared turns into negative 1. And then negative 4 and negative 1 turn into positive 4. And then add those together. And I get 5. Again, I could split these into two different fractions and be super fancy. 
And this is a good final answer. All right, email me if you have any questions, you guys.